Mike check one two one two. Mike check one two one two. You tuned into the hottest in that radio station on the planet. It's PlanetRockDJs.com. My name is Dogface Carl Brown, aka the bad guy, aka I don't give a fuck about you, aka I probably fuck your mom. And I'm just joking. <laughs> now, that's true though. That's true. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So let me just say this right. When I say that I have probably fucked some of these niggas' moms, right? Now listen. I don't want people to take that the wrong way, right? And back in my day, I was a motherfucker, right? So for some of you rap niggas who are 25, 26, I'm the OG, bro. I'm 46. And I'm an East Side motherfucker. And I had a bunch of money back in the day. And see, niggas got to know who their mamas and aunties was. You know your mama was a motherfucking freak. So if you know your mama was a no good riding ass, wretched ass whore, right? Just like the hoes nowadays, don't take no offense ladies, but you know, if your mama was a hoe, then you know that me and my east side niggas probably have blessed her. <laughs> Nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. You tuned into the hottest internet radio station on the planet. Just PlanetRockDJs.com. This is Unleashed Reloaded, a special episode, if I may add. Uh, I got my motherfucking player partners in the building. I got a, a bunch of motherfuckers who I've been knowing for years, I've been fucking with for years. Good, good, good human beings, man. Good, good human beings who are, uh, they're good human beings. I don't call a lot of people good human beings because they're not. And uh, some of these niggas ain't shit. We all know that. Some of these niggas, uh, the world would be doing, the world would be a better place if somebody was to knock some of these niggas' heads off. We know that. I ain't got to agree. This is just me talking about shit. But the world, it would be a better place if some of these niggas would get killed. Do y'all, do you agree? No? You don't, don't answer that, bro. Don't <laughs> answer that, because I'm ignorant. I only went to the sixth grade. So a lot of the shit that I'm saying is irresponsible and reckless as a motherfucker. Grass shit, motherfucking bosses have been with up though, bro. What up, dog? You know how we do it, man. You know a nigga better not touch you, man. I'm coming. Man, listen. Hey, listen. Cheeks is in the building. What up, dog? Where up? Okay, so listen. So, um, let me just, I'm going to start with Cheeks and then, then I'm going to migrate to you, right? And we got a, 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 a we got, we have a, a, a plethora. So that's a big ass plethora. That's a three syllable word. We have a plethora of other decent human beings in the building. China White is in the building. I'm gonna my nigga, my nigga Big Jimmy is in the motherfucking building. Me and Jimmy fuck ho. <laughs> That's what we do. Me, if if you if you have a mama that is 35 plus and she has a decent body, right? And, and she know and she got a good job and decent credit. Me and Jimmy probably didn't hit that bit. Nah, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga Jimmy hit your mamas though. All you rap niggas who got these decent looking ass mamas, and you know your mama like the 42, 43, 50. Yeah. I, Jim, when we stop at Jimmy, we stop at 50? 50, yeah. 50? Yeah, 50. If your mama has a decent body and a good job, me and Jimmy, then you hit that bitch. Period. So some of you rappers, y'all, y'all are me and Jimmy's kids. <laughs> Not this bullshit, bro. We ain't fuck y'all nasty ass, dusty ass mamas, man. Fuck your mama, you nasty, dumb ass, nigga ass. Anybody who had y'all dumb ass niggas, we probably ain't hit them hoes. We ain't responsible for this, this shit. Grassy bosses in the motherfucking building, aka the big bopper, aka he does. The, the nigga Grassy boss is like the coolest, most business like motherfucker rapper. You don't find no rappers who possess the level of business savvy and business acumen as he do. So I'm hard pressed to understand why would if since you're so fucking smart, why did you decide you want to be a rapper, bro? Man, this started back when I heard the AT Aliens album, man. Really, too short influenced me, but uh, the AT Aliens album when I heard that me and you heard right. the Vegas album, no, that that really touched me. And me and you don't, bro. That's dope shit. That was a dope project. The AT Aliens? Yes. That was, that's yeah, one of their that dope, dope projects. That was that's before they went crazy. That's before Andre 3000 went crazy. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. That's before, that's for Trials. He got with uh, Eric about dude. Good pussy, good pussy will affect you, right? So, mm -hmm. as we, before we really get off into the heart of this interview, right? Let, let me start off with, I always ask everybody this question, right? Give me your top five rappers, your top five hip-hop influences, the, the people who if you lost, because you're not as old as me, uh -huh. so it's like CDs and music coming up. Well, no tapes in there, right? No, it was tapes. Okay, it so was the white tapes. Right, right. Okay, right. So if somebody got in your car and took your tape, 
But somebody walk into your house and walk out with your tape, and you just go buy that motherfucker again and again, you don't give a fuck like, how many times you lost it, how many times the guts of that bitch came out, you know how the tape shit be, right? Get caught up in it, right? Give me a top five, top five rappers dead or alive, all time. The motherfuckers you put on your Hall of Fame top five. They gotta be too short. The Life is Too Short album, right. Mike Tate, uh, Eight Ball and MJG on top of the world. Uh, Tupac All Eyes on Me. Right. Uh, AZ, Do or Die. And uh, for the Down South, I gotta give it up to Master P. Master P? Master P. Okay, so so uh, uh, everybody you named, right, are all have, have all dropped classic projects, right? Mm -hmm. Master P has dropped, you know, he was the brainchild behind a lot of classic shit below the Mason Dixon line, so he's like a legend. Uh, what what did you like about uh, A Z? Because I'm, I'm a personal fan of A Z. You know I'm just saying. I like the way he came on like to the bitch and then he died. Right. I, like, I, I think he had the coldest verse on that. Everybody okay, so listen. Myself. I, I listen to rap that basically coincides with the way I think. Either the way I think or used to think or the way I, I, I live or used to live. I, I don't listen to, like, I'm not a fan of Soldier Boy because Soldier Boy doesn't speak to my heart. I don't just listen to rap just to be listening to it. I listen to shit of substance, right? And. Uh, I, I, I listen to music that coincides with how I do my shit or how I wish I can do my shit. So for me, AZ, uh, AZ was you know, that whole dope boy, New York, smooth, uh, Harlem shit. That shit, because I'm, I'm from the East Side, I'm from, I'm an ignorant motherfucker, so I listen to AZ because, you know, he talking that shit, plain and simple. And he put that shit in a way, and he, he articulated that shit in such a way to where if you from that lifestyle, bro, if you've seen it or even lived it yourself, you can appreciate that shit. Tupac, legendary. You know, Tupac is one of the most versatile. And if I had to say who, if they asked me who was the best of all time, I would say Pac, and that was because of how flexible he was. He could do the gangster shit. He could do the conscious shit. You know what I'm saying? He can do the turn up shit. He can do everything. And they can even write a heartfelt, you know, they can do anything. And there are not many MCs in the history of the whole hip hop game who had that level of. I think I think he devalued himself by getting to so much shit. And I don't think we really had the opportunity to really see. He's a genius. It is what it is, man. Tune into the best. PatternRockDJs.com. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about your just your start in hip hop. You just gave us your musical influences, right? Can you remember the first song you ever recorded? First uh, um, song I recorded was called It Was a Setup. It was a setup. It was a setup. And, that, and that's for Eastside motherfucker, that's, that's how, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Was it, was it a true story or was it just you saw something or was it just you were just feeling a certain way? Uh, I was feeling a certain way, man. You know, just growing up in the ghetto. Right. And uh, seeing hustlers throughout my life, you know, the way they move and the way they do their thing, you know. That was a, a a childhood, you know. We looked up to all the deep boys in the hood, you right. know. So it was kind of a a way of my expressing myself through my lyrics. Yeah, know? based on all the things you've seen. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it, it's, it's fair. So let's talk about just let's talk about who the great. Cause I whenever somebody acts, they say different names for you. You got uh -huh. like forty five different fucking names, right? I always say the grass <laughs> boss. Period. You know what I'm saying? I know people in his family, and when I see them, I'm like, what's up with the grassy balls? They're like, what? And they say your name and shit. I'm like, nah, grassy ball. I don't know who the fuck the other motherfucker is, right? What the fuck is that? What is your official rap name? It's really CLD, man. My homeboy talked me into getting an Instagram back in 2012. Right. And uh, I kind of, you know, put the name together. And uh, I said, fuck it, call it the grassy balls. Right. My man's to the side of me. Right. My man Cheek, man, I've been knowing over 20 years. He said, man, you got to go with the grass. So boy. you've been knowing Cheeks, unfortunately, for the oh. better part of your life. Over oh, 20 years, years man. Yeah, we was was it. It used to make me freestyle all the time. Right, right. Man. Oh, you so know? Cheeks was like a part of your inspiration to kind of like push you towards the shit? Off top. And Cheeks, what was that? What did you see in, in COD that made you like, uh, okay, I believe you can do something with this shit? Well, back in the days when I met the grass boss, right. you know, he was COD at the time, but... He used to always freestyle. 
That's what kind of tripped me out about a lot of these rappers today because I'm talking about I can name something he was just a freestyle mm -hmm. off of. And he had a Let's Jay Z style back in the day. Mm -hmm. So he didn't change himself because he was he want he wanted big. He wanted big. He was skinny. Right. So he Oh, you know always been on Big Boy? No, no. I was I was skinny than a motherfucker. So <laughs> it was kinda crazy because, you know, he can be like, let's go ahead and um get C O D to go ahead and rap off if the car going down the street, he can rap and talk some lavish shit about it. Right. And I liked it that. And you know, we've we've been rocking every since on, on that end. You know, everything he ever did to me was dope. Okay. I ain't never really doubted him in anything. The only thing I felt that would have ever doubted, you know, the grassy boss was himself. Uh -huh. I believe that, you know, he getting his bag when he wants to. Right. You know, and that's you know, that's typical for a rapper sometimes. You know, right. A rapper sometimes will try to change up because the climate is changing and how social media is changing and everything. But with Graduate Boss, his lyrics is timeless to me personally. He okay. know what to talk about. You know, he choose to stray away from certain things, but he definitely know how to get in his bag when he wants to. Okay, okay. All right. So how, how does it feel to hear somebody that you've been knowing for two decades kind of like, size you up and read you off like that. How does that make you feel? Man, it make me feel good, you know, cause uh, back when we was, back when I first started doing it, you know, a lot of people don't know, like the women didn't even appreciate Detroit rap. Right. I didn't really never tell no no women that I rap because it wasn't, Ugh, you rap, you know what I'm saying? The, the women, didn't, but now you got the internet, right. it's totally different, you right. feel me? So a lot of the young artists can't forget that the, the people that came before them paved the way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The open mics. Now you got the internet, you ain't got to do all that. You know what I'm saying? It was right. a grit and grind thing. So, you know what I'm saying? It feel good coming from somebody that... Well, we ain't never had a falling out. You know, I think with me and Gresham Boss is, I allow him to be him. Uh -huh. You know, and on top of that, you know, there's something I don't like about it. I don't um, direct him to say, oh, you need to change that. I let him see it for himself. I think any rapper that's out here rapping, you gotta you know sometimes go out there on that limb and yourself and let people see that if it's wrong or not. Because sometimes my opinion might not matter. My opinion might be wrong. So I always allow the grassy boss to do him. And you know I, I go strongly off how he feel about it. If he feel good about it, I'm, I'm with it. If he strongly feel about it, I will give it a try. And I say let's go for what we know. It, it's that simple. It's, okay. never, it's never been um, a debate with that. Okay, so let's talk about the, the music making process now, bro. Are, are you a beat first guy, like you get the beat and you beat the zone, or are you the type of guy who you, you have something in your mind and you try to find some production that matches or helps you kind of like express what it is you're trying to say? Which one is it? Well, I got producers that I got mutual relationships like uh, Tax Holloway. Uh, I'm gonna give him tax no motherfucking shameless plugs up in his bed, dog. And that's you know, I'm not interviewing tax ass, man. <laughs> Shut the boy ass, nigga. Don't sit this, get this nigga out of here, man. Get this nigga out of here. Shameless plug for tax holiday. Yeah, yeah. play ahead on this, bitch. <laughs> yeah, hell oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. rappers too, dog. Hell yeah, hell yeah. If you don't like your ass, it's a little bit more than that. Oh, oh yeah. Get, the, get your weight up, nigga. They've been around this thousand years doing this shit. You ain't getting shit. Tax is not giving, I don't give a fuck if it's a nigga granny. You not get granny. <laughs> Wait till that check gets the first money come out of you. You ain't got shit free. And 5000 if you got to write for you. Yeah, 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 and he can write some shit for your ass, too. You know what it is. Polo! Polo. Don't touch nothing. That's my nigga. That's my nigga, though. Polo, what's up, though? So, Grashy Boss. So, let's talk about just, do you listen to Detroit music? Or are you like, I listen to nationwide shit? I listen to Detroit music. I love what's going on in my city right now, man. I'm talking about Detroit music. I bet you do. I, I bet you do, because I, I can remember about four or five years ago, we ain't had none of this kind of shit really going on. We ain't had none we of this. At your, at your place of business, we used to talk about, you know, the, the moves and the strategies and what motherfuckers should be doing and could be doing to kind of like... Women Coming together. Go, yeah, yeah we, we used to have many conversations and discussions about that. So how do you feel now that the T. Grizzly effect, right? Let me talk uh -huh. about that, right? Uh -huh. See, because we've had our m ms and our Big Shines and... You know, we've had different type motherfuckers, like Royce the Five Nines and all, all that kind of shit, right? But we really haven't had a superstar or somebody of that ilk to make it to that level to really tell the story of what goes on in the streets. Whether you like the politics of T. Grizzly or not, whether you agree because you got niggas on, I don't like T. Grizzly. Uh, but let me tell you something, right? And I always say this to everybody. Uh -huh. T. Grizzly, he re-inspired. And he re yeah. the average nigga, the hood nigga from the street who really 
what really could we, when you look at Big Sean, niggas from the hood don't look at Big Sean like he made it, I can make it. Mm -hmm. Because Big Sean ain't coming from that vibe. He ain't coming from the street. He doesn't tell our story. Oh, you know, I ain't never met him. But uh, you know, I like to work with him. I think he moving a certain type of way, he moving the way he wanna move. He following his own footsteps. You know, and it's a it's a blessing. You know what I mean? It's a blessing to the the walk up that stairs with that ball and get in that door and don't drop it. You know, I right. seen a lot of people walk up them stairs with that with that ball and drop it and then they get mad at the public. We can't do that, man. It's a beautiful thing, man, to see the city coming together. And you know, we talked about this years ago, back in 2014. Man, I've been doing this shit since 98, man. And I'm gonna put it to you like this. The city, the city coming together and I'm loving it. But don't get up the stairs and drop the ball when you walk in the door, man. Yeah, no. And so you can't well, get mad at nobody, man. Well, uh, I like T Grizzly. You know, I think T Grizzly did uh, set the bar up real high. You know, he did his thing. But well, there's a couple other people I, want, I think that should get the credit. Like, you no, know, why hey, not? Chief, don't try to take over my interview, nigga. I ain't asked you motherfucking thing <laughs> about nobody motherfucking else except T. Grizzly, okay, motherfucker. Well, I own this building. Okay, I'm with <laughs> right. that. I ain't asked you shit but about T. Grizzly. Okay, now, we, you know, we know that there are people who... No, well, what I was saying was, it was just like, T. Grizzly did set the bar. But, like I said before, you know... I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna spoil that. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let no, you. No, no, go ahead. I'm not. I wasn't trying to be rude okay. or nothing, but go ahead. What, what I wanted to say was, uh, what I'm really feeling. I like peas. Who? I like peas. Oh yeah, no doubt. The reason why I say that because you know, to me personally, in my personal opinion, I believe he like the people's champ. Uh -huh. And I believe that you know, if if the things would have worked out a little bit sooner for him, he would have been the person what T Grizzly would have been. Yeah, if it was a filth we all be exactly. drunk motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know so listen, I'm not taking away from the PZs, right. the, the, the that's the whole team he said. But right. I but I do think that they he put a stamp on that situation. Yeah. And I think that uh and and T Grizzly magnified it and made yeah. it bigger. Yeah that's fair. And, and I can say that, you know, you know certain people in certain rounds do, do deserve a lot of credit. And I think that they both do. And I do like I love the way that he got in that that door, yeah. and he kicked it in, and he he emerged and unified a lot of different people, and I gotta respect that. Cause yeah. I think that when we talking about going back to Dogface, um, Big Shine, he had the power to do that. Uh -huh. You know, he could have went in there and got a payroll and got them together and did things together, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, for, I don't know for the reason why he didn't do that, but he didn't do it. Uh -huh. And T Grizzly looked at them as fans. Right. That, that's what made me love T. Griffin. Right. He, he gave credit when credit was due. Like, I was a fan of Payroll. Right. I was a fan of Peasy. Right. So you can't really take that from him. So right. I, I get much love and much pride. On multiple him. levels now, especially. Oh, yeah. Because our culture is, the reason, the hip-hop culture in the city of Detroit, it says, the reason why we can't, we haven't gotten as far as we should have gotten was because of all the beef that the industry know comes along with us. Like, we, this not Atlanta, bro. Right. In Detroit, a rap beef ain't just no fight. A rap beef get your motherfucking head knocked because up around this bitch. Because the people that's <laughs> rapping, they wear their heart on their oh, shoulder. I'm saying yeah. like it's just it's just what it is in Detroit. You know, if you live on the east side or the west side, right. our heart is on our shoulder. You no, know, we ain't we ain't if you go if you go and rap about somebody or talk about somebody, we 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 at that point where we say, Who the fuck you think you're talking to? Right. You know I'm saying we ain't we ain't we ain't the pushover city. So at the end of the day, I like the way that we starting to wake up a little bit and say, right. why, why fuck each other up? Well, we can fuck the outside people up. Right. You no, know, because wherever we go, a D nigga is acknowledged. I don't mm -hmm. give, you no, know, I don't care where we go. We can go to Miami. Mm -hmm. We we invade every city and, and we let our presence be known. Right. So I I do believe that I'm glad that they starting to realize that why eat ourselves up. Why my question is why hasn't Eminem and Big Sean done more? We, yeah. We can't relate to him. No, 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 no. But he, they can relate to us because they're from here. They've seen what happens here. They know that we've been thirsty That's and true. starving for some acknowledgement and for some major artists, and they know that we have the talent. So my question to you, don't be political, motherfucker. <laughs> Get that political shit out of here. Jimmy, oh, no, you ready for this nigga out. You ready for this nigga out here. I'm going to ask you a direct question, nigga. Okay. And when they may ain't finna come see you, here to do shit for you. Right. Okay, so listen. I'm asking you, why haven't they done more? Why does it take a motherfucker who's been in prison for stealing, driving, all other kind of shit? Why does it take a motherfucker like that? Because it, it's all about relate, environment. 
product right. of the environment. You gotta right. think like this. Everybody in this room never lived in war. No, that ah, right. shit. We don't. We know we, we go in war. We don't get tickets. No, everybody else fucked up. Or or, or people trying to repair they they whole situation. Right. I don't think Eminem. I think Eminem. I'm glad that he represents Detroit. Right. We just don't. We just don't. His profile. We don't recognize it. Cause we mm -hmm. look like okay, bro. We ain't never seen you at. They said you rapped at St. Andrews. I'm 37. I'll be 37 on Friday. Right. I ain't never seen him never in the damn city or St. Andrews or nowhere. I went to Legends back in the days in 97. Right. I ain't never seen him over there. I might have seen Proof right. or uh, King Gordy and all them other guys. Right. that. But I never really seen Eminem. And not trying to take none from him. He's a mm -hmm. great rapper. But I just think that a lot of artists, we just know him as a Every great rapper. Every time I ask somebody something about Eminem, they always say he's a great rapper. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah, well, listen. Great rapper. Yeah. <laughs> he, Eminem is a legendary flame spitting ass motherfucker. Right. What does that mean for little Brian who lives on Joy Road in Wickham? Right. Or who lives on Puritan in Sussex? Uh -huh. Or who li or, or little Mike Mike who live on Grash it in Whithorn? It don't mean shit. It don't man. mean shit. I'm asking you, I don't give a fuck about no fool, coat giveaway, none of this right. shit. Listen, motherfuckers in Atlanta, bro. Let's just step the whole to be honest, the younger dogs are reaching out to him. What's your question? Big Sean. Why hasn't Big Sean done more? Big Sean, I, I really don't get, get that because he went to Cast Tech from what I know of. He mm -hmm. went to Cast Tech. He understands everything that's going on in Detroit. So I don't know if he feel like, you no, know, that ain't where I'm going. Maybe, maybe he feel he more lyric. He got more lyrics than the actual rapper that he's dealing with. But i never really seen him collaborate okay. with nobody that we know today question. that's trying to come up. Question. Like, uh, like a graduate. Oh, okay, cool. yeah. question. Quick. My question here, and this, <coughs> this is not an Eminem or Big Sean Bass and shit. I'm, I, I'm asking legitimate questions that motherfuckers really well, yeah. want to know why, bro. So, T. Grizzly, selling dope, robbing, stealing, running jewelry stores, right? right? This motherfucker, he understands more, and he has more of a sense of obligation to help up and coming artists in the city of Detroit than motherfuckers who always screaming and yelling Detroit on every fucking song, bro. That's true. Huh? You telling me this young unge un uneducated black man who just got out of the penitentiary right. has more sense of loyalty and more of a sense of wanting to help people? Then these motherfuckers who have been stars and screaming fucking Detroit for ten years. That's true. Wow. Um, I, I, uh, 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 wow. That's true. All I got to say is wow. See, motherfuckers don't like me because <laughs> motherfuckers say doggy dog be talking that shitty shit. I don't give a fuck if a nigga like me or not. I'm gonna ask these motherfucking questions, my nigga. Remember Big Sean? He wasn't the best out there. We should have had a label here. Here. Oh, definitely. Eminem, for you to create a label here with all the money and resources that you have, for you to create a, I don't give a fuck if you don't respect the dope wood rapper. That's true. Name a backpack rapper you didn't have. You didn't win that 50 cent. 50 cent went on the, whoa, 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 stop. This nigga just, back up, nigga, hold on. This nigga said that this nigga, Eminem, maybe, 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 maybe not, doesn't understand the you street don't. culture. Hold on. But you wouldn't sign 50 cent. You know why? What? Ain't Shady based in California, right? And yeah. And Dr. Dre is behind him and 50 Cent had, if we're on our mistake, Jam Master Jay. Whoa, whoa. Eminem found 50 Cent and presented him to Dr. True. Dre. And 50 Cent was already bubbling too. He was fat. You remember he was fat? He was already hot. Was, but Eminem wasn't, I mean, 50 Cent wasn't no superstar, bro. He wasn't a superstar, right. but he was, he was hot. He was, a, he was a regional success. You got, you got Run DMC. No, Jam Master Jay, legendary group, back in him. Don't let me say I don't give a fuck. Don't let me say I don't give a fuck about this shit. But Jam Master Jay is the shit in New York. Okay, listen. We don't make that. Can we, can we, tap? can we, can we agree with that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jam Master Jay in the legendary history. Listen, me and Cheeks finna get the argument, because he finna make me say, make me say I don't give a fuck about that shit, nigga. So you telling me, you from, you get, no doubt, Jay Legend, I fuck with. You telling me a motherfucker from New York, was able to convince you that somebody from New York, when you're from Detroit, living in California, so fucking where La La Land, right. was this motherfucker was hot enough to make it. But we got niggas here, cash kids, peasies, vezes, yeah. who, who, them niggas get, listen, they making more money per show 
Listen, Rollo was getting five thousand dollars a show, and Rollo grew up with, with Young Thug, and he grew up with Future. They were running partners. He was getting five grand a show. Freddie nigga Rollo too. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Rollo. Right, right. Oh yeah. That's how I'm doing a lot. Okay, I got you. So listen, so Rollo was getting five ten thousand a show. Peasy Ice Rare Vezo was getting five or ten thousand dollars a show. So if if they're viable enough to get that, they, not just in Detroit, you can go to Indiana. Illinois, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Pennsylvania, they are in the region. They in Pennsylvania ain't even our region though, that's the East Coast, but East Coast. they getting it, they, they come in that breed and they're getting it. So how can you recognize that shit and 50 Cent all gangster shit? He ain't lyrical at all. So it can't be about the lyricism shit. I think it was a cosign. I really believe Co-sign? I believe that uh Emin- if anybody know about Eminem, I so Eminem ain't, had, ain't heard the criticism about you not helping niggas in your own city, bro. Come on. Oh yeah. Mama, Mama P, Mama P was socking me in your motherfucking face. You know what I'm saying? See a soccer nigga in, 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 in running a strip club, running down the joint. Mama P hoping wasn't no what no hope. She was a true trooper, a southern fat right. trooper. Rest in peace. You know what it is. So back to the grassy boss, right? What's up? Uh, I've been knowing you for years, bro. You've been grinding. How, has the grind gotten easier for you, bro, with the success of some of the artists that we just named? Uh, has it got easier? I, I I think so, yeah and nay, cause a lot of the a lot of the artists that give me credit, man, they give me credit behind those. Are you, are you considered an OG now around this motherfucker or what? <laughs> I think so, man, cause shit, I heard a motherfucker. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think so, man. Like, shit. I've been doing this shit a minute, man. A lot of inspiration from the East Side Cheddar Boys, man. I wasn't no Cheddar Boy, man, but I was right there taking notes. Man. I told you about giving these niggas Tax Holloway these but motherfucking you, shameless ass rappers. But, dog, you gotta, bro. You, you gotta get that respect. Why? Why? And with them, don't. I ain't gotta say shit about no motherfucking Tax Holloway and no Cheddar Boy. Tell you why. You can't tell me today, dog, that these pe- these people that we have gave respect to, like the uh, the tough tones, the taxes, the I don't ladies, fuck with them gangsta ass niggas. I'm gonna tell you why. They are highly influenced today. Uh-huh. These, these people, the rappers we speak on today. Well, you I say ain't that fuck they, with them you just ass told ass me. Bro. You just hey. told me, dog. Hey, that hey, these niggas making ten thousand, hey, twenty thousand a show. My how you rappers. think they make? How you think they make ten thousand a show? I don't know about this gangsta rap nigga, bro. I don't fuck with this gangsta. Ask that question, niggas, uh, dog. The niggas ain't. What you say now? Nah? How nah. you think these rappers are making ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars a show without the influence of a Tax Holloway or, or um, a Malik, or a Cheddar Boy influence? They actually have grew up on their music, so they actually just redefined it and made it current. Yeah, my bad. Well, if you don't agree with that, if you don't agree with that, no, I got the question. I don't have building. Chicks is in the building with all the fucking opinions and shit. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to turn into a fucking opinion session. <laughs> we gotta Y'all get know what it is. Yeah. One, two, one, two, yeah. Yeah. Mike Check 1212, you tuned in to the hottest internet radio platform in the country. It's PlanetRockDJs.com. For those of you who don't know, PlanetRockDJs.com is the only internet radio platform and station in the country yeah. actually owned and operated by DJs. So what that means is, we know what the fuck we're doing. This is part two. Of a very, very interesting Dexter Day on the motherfucking camera, by the way. Dexter Day, this shit better be sweet. <laughs> I'ma talk about your ass and criticize the fuck out you on social media. I swear on my mama. Dexter Day with the motherfucking building, he welding that motherfucking camera. Rash shit boss, aka CODs in the building. Polo, listen, I don't know when Polo got out of jail. And I don't know why you keep on fucking with this old criminal ass nigga, bro. But it has to be something. Cause y'all, the combination of you and Polo is some sweet shit y'all got going on, man. Polo, what's the word, bro? What's the deal, man? Welcome to the planet, bro. How you feel? I'm good, man. Okay, so listen. So let's just talk about y'all. y'all you got a current project going right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, we got a current project for sure. All right, what's the name of the current project? We're working on that boys in the summer too, right now. Okay. Uh, we just trying to tap in like with that. OG crowd and that young crowd, like, really That's gonna be hard to do, bro. I, I haven't found anybody who who has been successful with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what is what's the, what's the formula? That really, it, it does it mean something? Excuse me, brother. Does it mean something to you to be able to offer the OGs and the young bucks something that they can relate to? Does that does that mean something to you guys? 
Uh, not really, because they ain't even paying attention for real to the shit you be dropping on them. But it's like, we got our own core, and it's like, we got our own fan base, and the, the young people want to tap into what the OGs will be telling them at the end of the day. Right. Right. Oh, well, at least we hope they do, because a lot of these young niggas are hard here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want to suck up the game. Yeah, a lot of these old motherfuckers acting like young niggas, and they're hard headed too. Right, so let's talk about just hip hop, social media. Let's talk about how social media impacts hip hop, right? Right? Are you guys, are you guys ever concerned about how motherfuckers, the inappropriate uses of social media, how motherfuckers, rappers specifically, be going on social media and airing their own selves out and arguing and bigger and going back and forth on social media? What y'all, how y'all feel about that? I never see either one of you gentlemen in the back and forth and on social media shit. That shit is garbage, can't just man. They Exposing themselves and then they really a be back. They they really people that been, they friends and childhood homeboys that done went to school with each other and then they get to exposing each other and then they be right back cool or whatever the case might be or they might do too much and get themselves locked up. Right. You feel me? It's just some stupid shit all the way around to me. See? Yeah. How you feel about that? Uh, with the internet shit, man, you know, like they've been saying for the last couple of years, you can be who you want to be on the internet. Right. But, uh, you know, I just tell the youngsters, man, you know, be careful, you know, and uh, walk light, man, because they watching. Oh, they definitely watch. I just posted something on my Instagram. The 20 gentlemen who were in the rap video, mm -hmm. they got indicted for gun weapon violation for having guns in rap video. And that whole situation is personal to me because an artist who I used to deal with is currently in a federal prison right now for having Three the, reds on tape. Yeah, yeah, for having a gun in a rap video. I, well, I disagree with certain things with that. I believe that social media has put an outlet for a lot of people to be stars, you know what I'm saying? And of if course you're, If you're yeah. a rapper, uh -huh. that's, that's the outlet. No, it comes with the game. Like, if you're a rapper and you're putting up money or you're putting up guns or whatever you're trying to portray as a rapper, I do believe that it's a part of entertainment, but some people go too far. Uh -huh. Too far as in you exposing too much of your life. Uh -huh. Like, no, not even that. You can't be a rapper without being on social media and not letting the people know what type of person you we are. We talk about the inappropriate use of social media. The inappropriate media. use comes come, yeah. But you got to think, the inappropriate appropriate use is... You know, when people money up is inappropriate. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? When you put a lot of a lot of money up, you know, you potentially putting yourself in a situation. If you put guns up or cars or any type of lifestyle that you're trying to portray as a rapper, it's a potential uh, situation where it can harm you in some type of way. Mm -hmm. It's all about you utilizing it organically. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If you're trying to be a rapper, who ain't a rapper that ain't on Instagram yeah. trying to yeah. Yeah. be money. exposed? Be, exposure is the thing now. It's like the new drug. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, money, money, rather, money can be used inappropriate on Instagram because I heard somebody say, man, I made a hundred thousand last year. Right, did you pay taxes on that money? Huh. Well, no, that's that's some heavy politics, but if you if you really think about it like, you know, the more exposed you are, the more people gravitate to. Huh. If, the, if you're a rapper and nobody don't know you, I'm saying how, how will we ever determine what type of character you is? Like, you know, I even follow, I follow all y'all brothers, you know what I'm saying, mm. I follow Dogface, I follow you, you specifically Dog, mm. and you say some real life shit on your shit, mm. like some real life shit, and the shit you saying is OG shit, and it's on top of things of principles, mm. and these things that either people gonna listen to, or they gonna go and say, oh, that fuck what he doing, mm. you know, I'm gonna go and do what I wanna do, but the internet is open for you to have different type of doors to go through, you go to the wrong door, or the right door, or you can be organic. That's just life, period, bro. Exactly. Bro. Yeah, that's just life. So you, the internet is just a microcosm of, exactly. of everything that we go through anyway. So, yeah, yes, there's always choices that a motherfucker can make. You can go right and left and right. That's true. Very true. So, how, how do y'all feel about motherfuckers using the internet to beef and to, <laughs> you know? It ain't smart. Uh -huh. It's not smart. Jeeks. Nigga, stop trying to think about Because I believe that, you no, know, now as far as Detroit, you know, beef can go another way. But if it's in beef as far as rap, 9 out of 10, when we hear beef today, it's, it stems from rap. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> a motherfucker telling you he got more than you or you did, mm -hmm. you a sucker and he put it into rap. Right. We just don't know how to control it. Right. We know how to go overboard. 
I don't think, I don't think that, I, listen, I really don't think it was meant to be controlled. Because I really don't think that it was, you know, it, it, rap is a medium and a vehicle. And I can remember coming up, you know, in Detroit, we got them Cheddar Boys and Street Lords. They started that ignorant ass shit. Before <laughs> that, we had A-Wall and Austin yeah, Dre and shit, Smiley. I'm not friendly. It wasn't talking about no killing and acting no goddamn forward to these uh, motherfucking goddamn, uh, these niggas in here, bro. So when niggas say East Side Cheddar Boys, bro, you really, you really talk about beef. Because they don't have no friendly songs, bro. You name me one East Side Cheddar Boys song that's talking about positivity, upliftment of the black race on some KRS-One public enemy shit. Them niggas didn't know nothing about positivity. Them niggas spoke about killing, selling drugs, and killing. And robbing and putting a hole in the nigga the size of a CD. And, <laughs> no, I'm just keeping it gangster, bro. Listen, listen. Well, I can remember being locked up. I was in prison, right? I was in prison for a long, 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 long time, right? And I can remember the, you know, I remember the first thing I ever, I heard about the rock bottoms and the street well, level. Yeah, okay. No, but reality and rap don't matter no more because you, you, you can be the opposite of what you, the image that you are portraying, and motherfuckers don't call you on that shit no more, bro. No, they don't. As long as a nigga getting high. Or, if a nigga, you done built this image up and then some shit happened to you on the, on the internet, like a nigga blow your shit out or steal your chain. Nigga still gonna rock with it. Yeah, and they like. Nigga still gonna rock with him, cause that, that's just what happened with uh, Rich the Kid and Uzi Vert in Philly. Mm -hmm. He knocked sock the nigga across the counter, and and, and and Rich the Kid singles right now is one of the hottest songs in the country. They don't give a fuck because all this shit is skewed. So if we believe that um, rap is just only entertainment, you know, I'm speaking in just general, you know, right? To tax everybody. It is. It is. Um, do fake jury hold a weight in hip hop, like in, in rap period, like because. Due to the fact that we idolize a lot of these rappers today, and mm -hmm. it's been stereotyped, quote unquote, that they wear fake jewelry, or mm -hmm. it's been some quote unquote, them, it's been quote unquote that you know some of our favorite rappers or favorite DJs or anybody mm -hmm. could possibly wear fake jewelry. Um, is it a Detroit stereotype saying that if you wear fake jewelry, um, you're not a quote unquote real nigga or a real rapper or you're a real nigga, or do it, it, or is that all entertainment? Yeah, well, this I'm man. just trying. I'm just speaking this, in general. In hip hop culture, we go on Instagram today. Now, I see a lot of I see a lot of prominent guys that probably work hard for their trophies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They work hard for their Rolexes, their diamond chains, mm -hmm. and they still fight today. On I just paid twenty thousand for this chain. Right. And he paid nine ninety nine for the chain. Right. And I still get the he still get the same credibility as me. So that's, just, that's just the nature of, of hood the, shit. The anyway. exposure of you have a you you have. You have the the you have the but you expose the, the Mount Clear weight. jacket that costs seven hundred dollars, or do you have the Mount Clear jacket that costs two thousand? I'm right. better than you according to exactly. how people view me. If I have the real or the most expensive, we 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 culture struck, bro. We named that's, that's, exactly that's exactly what I want. That's exactly what the point I want to get across. What point is you making here? Is, is we culture struck? <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, so, we are. I'm just trying to figure out that you no, know, I can't wear no motherfucking Levi's and you got some PRPs on and expect to get the same reaction that you get. But it, it has it's, it's been that shit. That's that's how, we, we ain't said shit. I have it's ain't France. Anymore. I do. <laughs> we ain't said shit. I do agree with that. But we have we have went out the way. Niggas mix and match. match. Listen, bro. Nick, okay, I know that's niggas. why I'm trying to get I know niggas. Now you follow me. I, I, I know niggas who have real jewelry, and I know niggas who have mixed real jewelry with so, another piece of jewelry that's not, you know, that, that ain't. That ain't so what right. that makes them kind of like boost up they shit, right? right? But that's not no. I mean, if I, if I found that out, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say he was a whole ass nigga. Cause I wouldn't give a fuck. You that's, know what I'm that's that's why I'm getting. But you know, if, you, if you if you if I know you got fake ass Rolex on, I'm looking at you kind of side ass. Nigga. So the Rolex is that serious nigga? The Rolex is more valuable of saying that if you got a fake Rolex, but you got a, a real chain. No, I'm just saying if you wear fake chains, if you wear fake jewelry, period, bro. Why? Fuck the exactly. Rolex and fuck whoever don't believe you ain't got it. If I ain't got it, I ain't got it. I ain't wearing no fake shit. Because I would appreciate you more. I ain't got it, nigga. I'm, 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 I'm me. I'm clean. I'm, that's true. I mean, that's just how it go, bro. But but the kid, shout out to um, Payroll and Darko, his manager. You know, I sent out inspirational messages to everybody on Instagram. A lot of people get them. Um, I'll be seeing you. 
You I texted just, me that shit, yeah. man. Yeah. Hold on, back up for a minute, man. <laughs> Nigga, you better you take me off that fucking group <laughs> check. No, I actually <laughs> write your boss. What's the project on the floor that we working on right now? Boys of the Summer, Volume Two. Volume Two. Well, volume One. Did I host Volume One? No, no, you did the epidemic. The epidemic. In yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all yeah, going back and forth? Yeah. yeah. All right, how many songs on the project? I think seven. Oh, y'all going some Pusha T shit? Yeah, seven. Y'all on some Pusha T shit, seven songs of the whole album? Yeah. yeah. Niggas are always trying something new at you, niggas. I'm sick of you, niggas. Attention span to too short for them now, man. Now, Polo, see, Polo is not even talking about niggas. Now you talking about niggas mamas, because what you're really saying, if their attention span is short, I mean attention span is short, what you're really saying is their mamas was crackheads and dope fiends and the kids they produced had ADD and ADHD. That's exactly what I'm saying almost. This nigga Paul trying to get your fight with the black shit. Almost. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we only like the song for a week or two. Right, right. And then we like, what else they got? Yes, that's yeah. what we do. Then we looking for the next best thing, always, always. You know, like ain't no songs that's just gonna. You're not gonna find no old boy. Too no. Much. You're not. Oh, y'all running both Dave and Tax. You can't really go wrong because they both winning right now. You can't really. Go I think we gonna fuck with Jose the plug too. Yeah, Jose, Jose nice for that shit. Yeah, yeah. Jose Kobe. We, we want to reach out to Hellebuck, man, but he too busy, man. I can, I can, I can call him right now. You yeah, man. Tell Hellebuck, man. You ready? Tell, tell you know man. We, you we, ready we, we gotta call him right now. Yeah, call him up, man. Okay, I'll call him when he does his interview. Yeah, Me too. Hello. Okay, I got you. Hello, Jones, 36. Okay. Grab just, just type in grass, your boys, man. I'm going to pop up, man. All of all letters. Y'all know how we do it. Y'all know that's going to be the best. We all want to shout out, man. Any fans, family, supporters. Y'all want to shout out. Go ahead. Go ahead and do your thing. Man, I just want to shout out grass, your boss. You know, he done put me back in. I kind of like... Back. He put put us on the platform, man. You know he ain't have to do this shit, man. He opened up doors for us, man, and everybody doing their thing in the city. Niggas don't appreciate me.